Hi everyone, welcome to Reading with Macar. I am Lorraine Macar. Today I'm going to film a video about some books that I read in the months of January and February that really stood out to me. Now I started Booktube very recently and it feels weird not to have spoken about the books that I read earlier this year, so in the month January, February, March and April. So I figured I would just talk about the books that really stayed with me. Now I have three books I want to talk about today. I don't have any of them in a physical copy because I either lent it out or got it from the library or borrowed it from a friend. But that's not going to stop us. Now the first of the books is Baking Cakes in Kigali, written by Gail Parking. In this book we meet Angel, who originally comes from Burundi but now lives in Kigali in Rwanda. Angel is a businesswoman and she bakes cakes. Through her bake caking services she meets a lot of different people and these people always end up telling her their life story. Usually the starting point is why they need the cake and that's often has to do with a certain event and then they talk about um, more of the things that has happened to them. And that's a great way to get to know different people or with different lives in, in Rwanda. So for example, we meet the wife of the CIA agent who is in Rwanda and has nothing to occupy her. We meet an old boy soldier. We meet many different people. And Angel is this perfect housewife that allows them to, to share their stories and to see what they've learned from whatever happened to them. She also helps other people start up their own businesses, so teaching them to bake cakes or talks to young girls that also want to not just be a housewife. Now, by allowing us to look at Rwanda through the eyes of these different characters, we're seeing different sides of what it means to live in that country. It also it touches, for example, on the Rwandan genocide in which the Tutsi were nearly eradicated. At one point, Angel and a few other people go to a commemoration site of the Rwandan genocide, and one of the people that goes with her says that he has previously been to Auschwitz and that one of the things that is written a lot in the guest books of, in Auschwitz is never again, never again, never again. But it did happen again. The commemoration site Angel goes to is one where Tutsis were asked to come to a certain school and then were all burnt alive and their bodies are still in that place, which is good to to realize at least that that saying never again is not enough, that we need to take action sometimes as well. Now, the book is a bit too easy sometimes. Like I said, Angel is this perfect woman. She bakes cakes. Every woman should apparently know how to bake cake. She listens to everyone. She helps her community. She's the perfect mother. She's the perfect wife. And the author could have put in some things that showed some cracks in her armor to make her a bit more human. There is a part of her life that is revealed to us in the book that she, that she has trouble dealing with. But even so, everything was just a little bit too perfect. And I can imagine that for that reason, a lot of people don't really like this book because it's just a bit too colorful. But I liked that we got to read about the topics that come across in the book in a very in a very light way. For me it did work, but I believe this is actually the first in the series and we can, if we want, follow more of Angel's life in Rwanda baking her cakes. The lighting style is just a little bit too fluffy and bunnies and everything will be okay for me to to continue but it was a great way to learn about life in Rwanda. Most books I, I read to learn about countries are always about war or any other trauma the, the country is going through and the effect that that has on its people and this book at least dealt with it in a light-hearted way which can be nice. The second book I read is The Toymakers by Robert Dinsdale. In this book we meet Kathy, Kaspar and Emil. Kathy runs away from home because she is pregnant but unwedded and her parents aren't very happy about that and she ends up looking for a job at the Emporium, which is a huge toy shop. Now, in the Emporium she meets Kaspar and Emil, who are brothers and who are the sons of Papa Jack, the owner and the main creator of the toys at the Emporium. Now, the Emporium is not any other toy shop. It's huge most of the toys have a have a magical element and it allows children to be children and adults to remember their childhood now like i said caspar and emil are brothers but they're also 
rivals. They become rivals when it comes to the love they have for Kathy. They are rivals when it comes to being the next genie in the Emporium, the one that makes the best gifts. The first section of the book deals mostly with Kathy and her building up her life, and the second part of the book deals with the outbreak of the Second World War and the consequences that has for these characters. And the third part of the book we go back to the toys and to the magic realism and the toys start playing an important role in the story. For me, this book was wonderful. It was not what I expected. When, I, when it started out, because it starts out with Kathy being pregnant and then meeting these two boys, I really thought it was a boy meets girl type of story, but it's a lot more than that, especially when the whole Second World War starts happening. It has a lot more depth. I really like the different layers of the book and the characters, and I wish I could go to the Emporium to get me a patchwork kitten. The third and last book that I want to discuss is We Crossed a Bridge and It Tremble, Voices of Syria by Wendy Perlman. Let me start out by saying you need to read the book. Wendy Perlman went to talk to different Syrians and recorded their stories and assembled it in a book. And through the voices of all of these people, we are explained what brought up what we in the West see as the refugee crisis, but that is actually a lot more than that. Now, the book starts in 1970, and we get to read what it's like to live in Syria at that moment. The fear that there is, the hunger, people disappearing and knowing uh, they are being tortured, and the distrust that there is between neighbors, etc., etc., and how through the years that situation only gets worse and worse and worse. Then the Arab Spring starts and Syrians partake, which we understand because we saw what their lives was like and how that situation could not continue. Now we see how the protests start out and how they are initially just about being angry and, and being very spontaneous. And we see the progress of the protest and the retaliation and how each one feeds the other and continues growing and the rise of the different groups and the organized organizations of the different groups and how that led to people having to flee about not being able to stay in their original cities because because people were rounded up and shot and stuff like that and it also talks about how the people that flee want to go back they want to go back to their country but the situation is just terrible then we also get to read how it's like to have to start over and not know how long you're going to stay in your in the country you're going to stay. Ideally, when you flee, you think, ah, this is just going to be a few months, maybe a year, but it ends up being for decades. And how do you how do you organize your life when you don't know how long you're going to stay for and you do actually want to go back? But bombs are going off. And the book also talks about the role the West plays in, in this whole tragedy. Now, what Wendy Perlman did is that she cut up the stories of the different people that she interviewed and she organizes them in a, in a, in a timeline. And so we end up reading different vignettes every time someone discussing a little thing that they saw happening or the feeling that they had, etc. And in every, in every section of the book, each story builds on the next somehow. We're given just a little bit more fear, just a little bit more hunger. We're seeing how these protests really evolve with every time little nuances that are added, which really makes the book awesome. And because of these voices, of all of these voices and of the little nuances that are added, it really brings home what is happening. This, is, this book is about uh, people suffering. Now, the one negative that I have and that I saw more people have is that the book is very one-sided. We do primarily hear from the people that are suffering and we don't hear from people that are on the side of the current government or that are fighting for ISIS or anything like that. The situation expl is explained in such a way that we can still sort of understand the standpoints of the different parties. And it already gives us so much more than information that I at least had because I had no idea. I mean, I know there is a war going on in Syria and that it's super complex and that there are all of these different parties. So hearing from the people through their own voices is, is awesome and I highly, highly recommend this book. These are all of the books I wanted to talk about today. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of them or what you think were the, are the books that stood out to you from those months. I am going to film another video in which I talk about the book that stood out in March and the books that stood out in April, so look out for that. For now, bye!